No, it's yeah. fuel. <laughs> okay, this is fuel. Yeah. And Marie. Talking about her new fancy dancy e collar. She's starting uh she's starting to let the dog wear it. Uh, she's in the next month or so she'll do some collar conditioning. So she has uh, no, no. that tool also in her training tool bag, so to speak. Mm -hmm. He's a young dog. He's real fiddly uh, on the long down. But how old is he? He's less than uh, three, less than oh, two. Oh, no, yeah, he's uh, 14, 15 months old. Oh, he's still... Yeah, he's a baby. He's a big puppy. Yeah, he's a, he's a big puppy, yeah. <laughs> he's a very, very big. <laughs> yeah, a very long puppy. Yeah. But that's good. Uh, well, was. And you see some of his fiddling there. It's just, it has largely to do with just his mind frame. Right. Well, someone just walked in the door, he got excited. And yeah. Marie's been working a lot on what we call contact healing instead of focus healing. And chair stuff. Can't see nothing. Yeah, because I think what I did was I backed up and then I was going to. Yeah. And then I stood on top of a milk crate and then <laughs> with a bowling ball on top or something. Yeah. This is an interesting exercise. We started doing this. I use this a lot for even pet dogs and stuff, but we're using this for mania ring training. Uh, there's an exercise in the bite work called, uh, in the protection phase of uh, mania ring, it's called the defensive handler, and the, the job of the decoy and the judge is to try to separate you from the, from the dog and to try to trick your dog into either biting or not biting when it should or shouldn't. So, um, I mean, how do you sit down in chairs? And then the decoy can maybe try to distract your dog. So what we do is that we teach the dog that whenever it's sitting like this in this chair, in between the legs, that there's going to be a bite. And you'll see here in a second, hopefully, we sit down another way to tell the dog that there is no bite. And so this is nice here because the dog basically can't be separated from the handler if he's sitting underneath the handler. With the dogs laying down underneath the handle. And has fuel had a bite from the no, chair we, yet? No, it hasn't. Uh, we haven't incorporated that into the bite work yet. It's just skills that we're teaching in obedience that will tra later transfer to the bite work. So we try to teach all of our dogs the exercises before we actually incorporate them into high stimulating environments, which is bite work. I like the deer head up on the wall there. Yes, the dogs like it too. We generally use that as a retrieve object. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> we have had dogs do bark and holds on them. <laughs> I'm sure. So, and you can kind of tell Fuel, even though you were walking around, Fuel hasn't, you can see he hasn't had a bite because he's not really looking for the Yeah, and this is helper. just obedience, and he knows it's just obedience. Notice how she pauses before she sits down. That's one cue for the dog. That the that he's going to go between the legs. And she also turns, so to speak, into the dog as opposed to making the dog rule with her. Watch the next time she does a, the down underneath, she'll actually have the dog rule underneath. She'll, and there's no pause. There you go. That worked out nice. Yeah. Then look, yeah, it's very smooth whenever you do it right. There you go. Nice. You see. So actually, essentially, you're going to sit down on top of your dog. <laughs> See how she pauses? Comes in. Perfect. Good. There you go. Then the dog walks with her again. Ooh, she's doing some uh, touch pads. She just got some new touch pads. These are ones that are pretty flat on the ground. We'll use the touch pads for a bunch of different things, but primarily for jumping. So that's why she's telling, teaching the dog to, to sit and face her. We'll put a jump in between. Actually, Marie has had the jump in between. These are just some new touch pads. Right. Easing into the new yeah. tool. Yeah. So we had no time to really get outside, so we haven't been doing any jumping this winter.
Really effective play. The dog brings the toy back, wants to engage with her. Outs well, retrieves the toy back well. She actually had a lot of problems with him as a young puppy, uh, um, teaching him to play. He just naturally didn't want to bring things back. And kind of a bonehead that way. She's going to do some positions, I think. Yep, good. She's working a lot on the mechanics here. We're trying to keep his front feet as stationary as right. possible. Yeah. And that's why she leaned into him, because yep. he had a tendency to jump forward. Yeah, and the down, yeah, they, they have a tendency to flop forward instead of push back like that. And it's kind of a hard fade. Uh, um, she's going to use some barriers, and she's also probably going to use the touch pad. She's going to teach the dog to do touch pads and do the positions on there so she can get the distance. Now she's just kind of testing him. Yeah, and, right. well, yeah she's just stay, yeah, making him stable and realizing, uh, uh, teaching the dog to, right. regardless to stay in the position, whatever she's doing. Good. Good. And I step in here in a couple minutes and give Marie some bad advice. Why? <laughs> She's doing good. Yeah. Yeah. Should have let it flow. Yeah. Huh? It was good. Uh, I was worried about um, the cues being that she's moving, so I wanted her to say the, the command first oh, okay. and then cue the dog. Right. Yeah. Going all the way back to basics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he still came forward a little bit there, which we don't like so much. What about that bouncing? It's okay at this age. We, I mean, I prefer not to see it, but he's just kind of exuberant he's young, to do yeah, it. He's yeah, he's a young dog. But I think that what's going to help this dog a lot is the positions on the touch pads, so she can get distance and stuff. And not only that, but the <coughs> we'll be able to also do a little bit of work here after she does some collar conditioning with the dog too and the dog understands how to use the electric properly, you know. And we can use it there too to get stuff from a distance, mm -hmm. behaviors from a distance. Some people will use barriers such as string and stuff, which is very good, then they start to fade it to... Um, how would they use string? Well, they use, they'll use they use a barrier to teach the dog to do the positions behind a barrier so the dog can oh, come okay. forward, right? right? right. Uh -uh, like and then, string on posts or yep, something? Yep, okay. and then they'll use, uh, I've seen people use all different types of, uh, uh, you know, they'll plant uh, stakes in the ground and then right. use string around them and then they can fade it to lighter string to, to oh, fishing you, line right, and then to right. nothing, you know? So it's one of the things about props is, is that we got to fade them, we got to get out of them. That's why I don't like to use big boxes or anything like that. And these touch pads will actually be easy to fade too because we can cut them in half and keep cutting them in half until it's mm -hmm. basically nothing. And then we can go lower ones and thinner ones. So Marie's uh, doing a lot with the, she's trying to make a uh, heads up healing here. Uh, um, she's been working on it for a little bit. Um, she had really nice regular healing, but she didn't like how the dog's head wrapped around. So she's went back to the beginning and kind of trying to get the heads up with this dog. <laughs> Like, he can do it, but he's not. Oh, there you go. But it's really time consuming to get it and stuff. But she wants to do it, so it'll make her a better trainer, too. And this type of healing is actually completely different from what we were doing earlier, the contact healing, which is basically the dog healing or walking beside you by braille, by leaning right, against right, you, right. which isn't so precise, right? And so that's more the type of healing that you would use every day. This, 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 uh, uh, this healing here is uh, very impractical. You can't have a dog go heal to the store <laughs> with his head straight up for 45 minutes. Good job, dog.